I ran a little experiment that I want to share with you all. Uh, I shot two rolls of Kodak Double X, and I developed one in undiluted Xtol, and I developed the other in diluted Xtol 1 to 3. I'm curious to see if I, you know, how obvious the differences are and maybe what my preferences are. Okay, so a little bit about Kodak Double X, which is definitely one of my favorite films, if not my favorite. So it's a cinema film, and it can be bought in 400-foot rolls or larger. Um, right, That's what I do, and I, I bulk load it. But you can also just pay from, you know, Cinestill or someone else who's doing the bulk rolling for you. I actually saw a pretty good price on, on eBay, somebody that was uh, uh, bulk, bulk loading it for you. Um, and then, uh, so it has a gray acetate base, which is uh, opposed to Tri-X, which is on an S-Star um, polyester PET base. All right, this is a cubic grain film, um, right? Not a tabular, not it's not tab technology. Um, speed is around 200 to 250, and... You know, they, they say that just because, like, you know, if, if, you're, if your light source is more on the red end of the spectrum, you need to give it, uh, you know, like an extra third of a stop. <clears throat> uh, but in, in daylight, it's a 250 speed film. It's moderate to high latitude, so I usually underexpose it by a stop or two or even two and a half stops. Um, right, it's not doesn't quite have as much latitude as HP5, um, so that's why I just said moderate to high latitude. And it's a very sharp film. Um, but the sharpness is like, it's at the medium coarseness. It's not like a super fine grain type sharpness, um, right? Think about what this is for, which is cinema. So it's it's interested in, in images being very sharp and being visually snappy, but not, you know, these aren't still frames where people are inspecting super fine detail. So it makes it pretty unique. Um, Right, it has some type of sharpness die that makes it different than something like Tri-X. Okay, so that's double X. Um, and then let's talk about Xtol. So Xtol is an ascorbit phenidone developer. Um, interestingly, right, the it's probably more the ascorbate right this the, the vitamin c that's doing most of the developing um it is low fog uh i think my my negatives i think i registered about a density of 0 0.31 um Right, and that's part of the reason we think Ascorbit is doing the most of the developing is Ascorbit's a low fog developer and Finidone typically is more fog. Um, okay, so it's a solvent developer. So, right, it has, it has, I think, about 80 grams per liter of sodium sulfite um, undiluted. And so it's it's... Uh, which is maybe just a little bit less than D76, but it definitely puts it in the in the category of a solvent developer, and it's going to have fine to very fine grain, um, right, for a given film. Uh, and then you know the the issue you run into with a lot of solvent developers is you're giving up definition and uh, sharpness. Uh, right, D76 was 
sort of the first commercial developer, solvent developer that was also sharp. Um, but Xtal is maybe a little sharper, right? I think, you know, we're talking about something like a 10% sharper than, right, other sharp solvent developers. So nothing extreme. Uh, it's going to hold box speed uh, or faster, right? This depends on the film. Um, but you're at least going to get, uh, you can at least have box speed available to you. Um, and for a lot of films, it's even a little bit faster, right? maybe a half a stop or a little more um, compared to um, maybe like D76 and you know other solvent developers. So, and it, and it also holds its properties very evenly over time. Uh, the pH isn't a roller coaster uh, until it rapidly dies. So this makes it very different than D76, which is a little bit of a pH roller coaster and has a more of a slow, graceful death. Um, Xtal is it's very consistent, and then all of a sudden it's it's gone on you, right? Which is that little property is what you know makes it not quite as popular of a developer as it could be otherwise. Um, okay, undiluted X tall. So this this was one of my roles, right? I did an undiluted X tall and regular agitation, which right there Kodak recommends every thirty seconds, um, right? Xtal was developed to be something you could do in a small tank, but also rotary. Like they they had um, right rotary development in mind. It was definitely um, something they wanted to work in commercial developing machines and settings. Right, they had large labs in mind. So. Um, so I stuck to that regular agitation technique of 30, every 30 seconds, uh, undiluted. And, and so sort of the why would you, um, right? You're getting the most solvency effect, so you're getting the finest grain. But it's still sharp enough, right? Maybe not maximum sharpness, but probably most of the time still sharp enough. Uh, it's the fastest developing times. So... Um, right, you can box speed development can be, you know, six, seven, eight minutes, depending on the film. And it's also good for maximum pushing and contrast. So if you're really trying to get a lot of density in your midtones and highlights, uh, my cat say and I, um, that, you know, undiluted is, is, is the way to go. And then it's also in terms of like a density curve, it's a it's going to be a straighter curve, especially all the way up to the top, right? You're getting nice highlight separation. Um, my cat is really saying hi, so I hope. Do you want to say hi back? They say hi back, Amos. Okay, um, he might climb on top of my head here in a second. All right, the the second roll, um, right? I tried this other development technique. So diluted Xtal, one to three, one part Xtal undiluted to three parts water. And for agitation, I did a minute, every minute for the first three minutes. And then I switched to every two minutes. And I think I did about 26 minutes total. Um, okay, so Right, what has the literature said about right, why you would do this? Um, so you're cutting the sodium sulfite by 75%, and this is going to create less solvency effect, and you're going to have um, larger grain, sharper grain, more pronounced grain. You're gonna, it's going to be a higher definition, sharper, more edge definition. Definitely slower development time. 
Um, right, I said, I think, what did I say, 26 minutes. Um, for a lot of people, that makes this a non-starter, but, right, with two-minute intervals, um, that makes it pretty easy to multitask. Um, right, there's an expectation that in the shadows, we're going to get a little bit of a, a, a lift, so a small speed increase with dilution. We're going to get a compensating effect, so, right, the... There's just not a lot of developer where you right, if you're not replenishing it every 30 seconds and it's diluted, places where you're getting a lot of density are running out of um, fresh developer. And so you get, it creates a, a shouldering of the curve, right? A, a, a bigger shoulder that starts earlier, but it's gradual. Um, so that does mean you're getting less separation in the highlights, but sort of, sort of like a form of highlight recovery. Um, which is, you know, the idea is that maybe that's good for if you're doing like 36 different shots on a roll with all different types of scenes, right? It's, it's good to sort of kind of have all your, all your, um, shots sort of your highlights a little protected. Uh, is it cheaper? I, I haven't done the calculation, but I do think right um, there's fear around when you start diluting this much that you're running into the risk of maybe um, you know if your chemicals aren't great or your um, your water is not pure um, or there's just it's aged or oxidized or whatever you are sort of risking um, extol death and and just and so Right, the recommendation there then is to use fresh chemicals, to use diluted water, uh, right, to take good care of things. And so by the time you do that, and time is money, so I, I, that's why I put cheaper, question mark. Riskier, um, right, Kodak no longer even recommends one to three. Uh, there's people that do one to five or one to ten. Um, and will tell you that it's not a problem as long as you're taking the right uh, precautions um, but yeah if you're if you're sloppy and you're using right replenished x tall that you're sort of following the right guidelines for and it's you're, you're you're using tap water of who knows what quality yeah there's there's maybe some risk um, Kodak mentions at least 125 milliliters of developer roll and Right, depending on the size of your tank, you might find like, oh, that's, I can only get one roll in my tank, or, um, yeah, I mean, a lot of people that use a kind of small home tanks, right? That's gonna, or if you're even a, a big commercial lab, right? This, this definitely cuts back on how many rolls you can do at a time. Um, right, so for a lot of people, there's some things just kind of stacking up against this, and you would really have to for there to be a pronounced difference between these two strategies and you know for the the context to call for like oh this for these pictures right i i want to do this um so and i i was sort of i i thought about maybe doing one to five but um i was sort of pinned in with the tank i was using was limiting me to try uh one to three so that's what i tried um, and then, you know, just to mention, I don't know if, uh, whoops, I just opened up Slack. I don't, you guys don't need to see my Slack messages. Um, oh, now I just opened up, um, SQL Server Manager. <laughs> Apparently I can't hit the right button, so bear with me here. Yeah, we're not going there. Um, okay. So, let me remind myself where we're at. All right, let's just skip. Oh no, I was going to show you the right the Kodak PDF. Um, right, so come down to Triax because they don't have double X, and Triax is a good approximation. So we're going to use. Um, I did like a two stop push, so that was the sixteen hundred row, my temperature. So I did nine and three quarters for the first recipe, and then for one to three, I took uh, thirteen and a quarter minutes, and I doubled it. Um, so. Somewhere on out there, you might be able to find Kodak's one to three recommendations. They just, it's not part of the current publication anymore. 
Okay, so a few, a little bit more about my particulars. Um, so I shot two rolls, right? So I could have one for each. I underexposed both by two and a third stops. My camera was set an ISO 1000. Um, so I'm dropping, right? I know I'm dropping shadow details, and I'm putting more of my like primary, right, midtone subjects. I'm putting them in the grainier layer of the film, right? So I'm I'm looking for some extra grain. Um, and then I developed only to like a one and a half two stop push, um, which is almost what I underexposed by, but I was sort of willing to, if I was gonna have a thinner or a thicker negative, I wanted to side on thinner negative this time. Um, and I, you know why? Just, just because I had some thin negatives recently, uh, it was Kent Mirror and, and I, I scanned them. I was like, man, these look good. Um, you know, it's it's a difference between underexposed and like there's really not an image there versus like you got good exposure and it's just a thin negative. So I don't know. I'm just sort of exploring um, kind of the quality of the negatives and how did they turn out? They were you know to my eye they were a little thin. I think I put them on the uh, I, I did some density readings you know and I I was you know maybe my dense my most dense parts were maybe 0.9 above fog so um definitely you know not dense negatives but not super 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 dense um yeah so then you know follow the XL pdf i already told you about what i did for one to three um right i, I mostly do home development but i was traveling and i have a relationship with royal we film lab in oakland all right, so I was working, I was, well, volunteering there. And so I um, did my development there, and um, I also scanned on their Naritsu, um, which I'm, I'm pretty, you know, picky about my scans, and I figured I would scan my own, but these scans came back um, so good that I just saved myself the time from having to, stand, from, to scan. Um, and just a quick comment about Naritsu uh, scanners, right? I've learned that they're not all equal and they take a lot of work and calibration to, to really get a nice, even, um, sharp scan across the whole scene and to get the colors right. And, um, this is black and white, so I'm not so worried about that, but the, this, this, this Naritsu was, uh, in really good shape. And these are just random travel shots. Um, nothing great. I'm not setting up test scenes. This is just, um, right. I'm headed to the airport, going down to Oakland, uh, to spend the weekend at Royal Wee Film Lab. And, uh, every shot is with a Leica 50 millimeter Elmar M 2.8. Uh, the camera metering system is a Leica MP. All right, let's look at the images. Uh, and I'll also say like, I'm, I've looked at these, but I'm still sort of forming my opinions. So it's kind of happening live time here. All right, I grabbed the top two are from the, well, maybe I won't tell you for a second, All right? The top two are for one are from one roll and then the bottom two are from the other roll. All right, the top two are from the undiluted roll and the bottom two are from the diluted roll so uh, I should back out right I was zoomed at 100% so right if I I'll back out on all these for a second of to 100% okay so this one here right my focus and my exposure reading were right here. Um, yeah, the grain is very fine, right? This is a right fastish black and white film, right? In the two hundred to four hundred category, um, this is at a hundred percent. The grain is almost invisible like you can kind of see a texture to it 
the edges are definitely not sharp. The image, I would say, is, is a sharp image. Um, I think that like this type of edge can be sharper with double X. So this I wouldn't call this a, an example of m maximum edge sharpness. Um, it's plenty sharp. Uh, especially if I'm just printing like a 4x6 or an 8x12. Um, and then, yeah, this little commentary, right? This is my cousin. He's the proprietor of Royal Wee Film Lab. And he, on uh, right, day one, had got an Apple Pro Vision VR headset thingy. Um, this was the last moment I saw of him for the weekend before he disappeared. Uh, okay. So I'll leave this one uh, at 100% for now. Uh, okay, this one, let's get in here. So that's where I focused and metered. Uh, again, it's kind of the same story. It is, right, it's a, a lot of sharp. It's sharp, not as extremely sharp as this film can get. Um, but it seems plenty sharp <laughs> uh, and the grain is very fine um, if I come up here into some of the more underexposed parts right again there's a grainy texture um, but it's sort of a soft this is the kind of grain that would look good like a lot of um, smart devices over sharpen so you send it, you know, you send it a black and white grainy photo and it just looks like a cheese grater or sandpaper on a lot of uh, modern devices that apply a lot of algorithms and sharpening and whatever. Uh, this one would not do that. This would, I would have a lot of confidence that I could send this to somebody on, uh, on an iPhone, even an older one, and it would look good. Um, all right, now let's, here, I'll leave that one at a hundred percent. Okay. Now this one, this is, I'm on the BART going probably 60 to 70 miles per hour. And I shot at one thousandth of a second. Uh, and I froze Bruce Lee. This is also through the window of the BART. So in addition to shooting through the lens, right, I'm shooting through a window um, and here's a hundred percent. The grain is starting to take on, right? It's subtle, but it's a little bit sharper grain. Um, and now I'm starting to see, I feel like, right? The extreme sharpness of double X, just a little bit better, right? The, the edge sharpness is just a little more pronounced. Um, Again, I'm impressed that this is a, uh, like, let's see, I don't know, right? I'm just impressed that I'm traveling at like 60 miles per hour and you just can't really tell, right? Um, right. It's only one thousandth of a second shutter speed, right? It's not like an eight thousandth or thirty-two thousandth or something. Um, okay, I'll leave this one at a hundred percent. But I will also say I'm not seeing anything extreme, extreme like edge effects where you get with um, right high definition developers. I think I'm this is more of just sort of maximizing the sharpness that already exists in double X film. Um, here, so I focus here. Um, again, it's you know I think it's just a little bit more. A little sharper and a little more grain sharpness. Um, and I think what you know, the reason I chose these is because I'm looking at the negatives and like the density in this little pocket is about the same as the density in this little pocket. Um, and same here, right? I, I kind of want to, I'm looking at the negatives and I wanted to kind of compare really similar. Um, 
negative densities. So we're going to look through some more images, but if I'm just basing it off this, I, I think a lot of what I you know, have, have read would be true about these two different developing techniques is true. Maybe so maybe not hitting as um, as being like as obvious as I thought it would be. Um, and, you know, it just sort of makes me think, well, I get why the right diluting one to one has become very common. Um, you could kind of imagine like a middle ground on these two is a very happy place most of the time. Um, and then I'm also thinking like I'm not seeing right edge effects with ex like with high high definition developers. You start to see um, where the edge of something like this right. There's a, it's a little more highlighted right next to the right here, and then it's a little darker right here. Maybe I'm I don't know. I think I'm I think I'm just imagining that I'm seeing it. It's not. It's definitely not um, super obvious that there's like high definition edge effects happening here. I think we're just getting sh right sharp film, and we're not getting much solvency effect. So. Um, you know, this, this photo, what is it of, right? The Noritsu, you know, he was working on his Noritsu C41, um, right, developed processing tank. Um, so he, he had it open and he was, he was working on it, um, which had developed, if you, if you watch my video on Phoenix, right, this machine was used to develop it. Um, and then here, oh yeah, I already kind of gave some comment as this is just you know in the airport they have these like you can pay money to go inside and sit in a little box um i've never seen one use one i think they're a little bizarre um so yeah okay now i'm gonna sp maybe speed up here but i you know maybe share some shots and we can talk about what we see at 100 percent um Right, so we're going to start with the diluted roll. So here, um, you know, what do I like about this? I like. I think I, I think I could have. Um, I wish I'd maybe stopped down one more. No. No, I like it. I like this picture. Um, I like the grain. You know, in terms of do I. Would I have preferred this in undiluted? I don't think so. Uh, I think everything that's going on in here, I dig. Um, you know, compositionally, it could have been stronger. Let's see here. This one, you know, I'm definitely, you know, this is, this right here, or I actually like how that looks here. This, this, um, this grainy, this graininess. And this was a th this was very barely registered on the film, so this is very thin, you know. Meaning it was, I probably could have opened up the shutter, you know, another stop. But at the same time, I kind of like it. Right, I kind of like that grainy look there. Um, this right here, right? That's what I. F oh, that's two hundred percent focused here. Um, I already showed you that one. Uh, again, you can tell how much this is sort of underexposed. Um, I think, you know, I'm, I sort of wish I had shot this roll at 800 or maybe developed a little longer, just a little bit. You know, I say that at the same time, I'm like, I like the grain, so <laughs> I don't know. Um... I, yeah, I focus here on the edge of this table. Yeah, I mean, this looks, you know, this... It looks pretty good. It looks pretty good. It's nice and grainy, but not crazy grainy. Let's see. All right. This one, this is not my child. He, I was, I was honestly just taking this photo, and he 
came into the picture. But here would be an interesting spot to sort of look for edge effects. You know, you can almost see that, right? There's a little bit of a highlight there. Um, and a little bit more darkness right there. It is subtle, right? So, right, that gets more and more pronounced if maybe if I had diluted this one to five, right, you get more of that type of effect. Um, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, you know, I, uh, I like, I freaking like it. I'm probably gonna end up saying that about almost all these. The um, here, right? I love that sometimes you you know you don't realize what's in a picture until you look at it, right? I was just taking a picture of this trash can. I was just interested in in getting these tones. And then he started throwing away his cup, and I just, you know, caught the moment where he's throwing it away. And then I zoom in, and it says, no cups. <laughs> so I just get a little kick out of that. You know, it's, here's a, see, there's 100%. Um, and I've actually already cropped, I've actually already cropped in on this, which is why maybe it feels like 100% comes early. Um but yeah, it's an, it's an impressive amount of detail and sharpness, considering, right, that this is, uh, I shot this at a thousand. Um, okay. You know, I, it's always nice to kind of get this, like, uh, right, this wood, see how that looks on, right? So if I come in here. Very sharp, right? I think attractive grain. You know, where you have to worry a little bit, or, you know, I often get, if I have a real grainy black and white shot, it, people don't often say anything unless it ends up being skin tones and they find it a little bit offensive. They say, ooh, that's, you know, too much grain for my tastes, right? Um, yeah. That looks really good. Okay. Here I, I liked the challenge of this. This is almost full sun coming through. Um, she's anxious about the turbulence. And I took it as an opportunity to test a very difficult scene. Um, right? It's... I can read in my in ninety five made in the USA. Um, I think it's attractive grain, and I'm also just impressed that right this is pushed two stops in a very contrasty scene, and it didn't turn out right. It still gave me a little bit of room to play around with sort of what I wanted to be a mid tone. Uh, this is like a good test of grain because it's this is this is basically glass and it's almost all the same va tonal value right which is where you can really get grain to graininess to show up and that's a hundred percent again I think if this was undiluted it would be a little soft soft definitely softer finer grain um, Right, here's where I was focused. You can tell that's spot on sharp. Um, now I'm on the BART, right, in, and I'm, I'm headed to Oakland. Um, I don't want to spend too much time on this one. Right? I think I missed the exposure on it, um, but sort of like the composition. This is we're now moving on the BART and I sort of, you know, I'm like, I'm inside the train, but I'm shooting through the window and just sort of saw this sort of interesting, right? I kind of thought it made it for interesting patterns. Right. 
right? I applaud this with just, um, yeah, it looks good. I mean, if I just saw this image, I would, I would be pretty tickled by, right, the technical parts of it. Um, you can sort of like it as a, right, sort of an abstract image. You know, I'm pretty excited just to be taking pictures at this point because I, I don't get a lot of opportunities to, to just putz around and take random pictures. Um, so I'm kind of just firing away at whatever. But kind of like the way this, this like arrow and path came along. Yeah, I think this is like zone focused, but stopped down to like F11. Um, this was, I think, you know, the reason I saved this one was because I didn't just lose all the shadow detail, um, right? It's, this is very, very thin, barely, the exposure barely registered, um, but there's still something a little bit there and it's not hideous looking. And then, right, these, these, this looks good. Right, and I'm deeply influenced by Joseph Kudelka's work, and this is sort of reminds me of one of his shots. Um, I also like that I, you know, I intentionally captured a little bit of this into the frame. So, all right, this one, I'm going to look at the negative real quick. See, I feel like it came out, it looks to me like it came out under, well, let's see. There it is. Yeah, that's a pretty weak negative. Um, you can kind of see. So if you're really underexposing here, right, this is sort of sort of what it starts to look like. Although that, see, why would that be really underexposed? Maybe a little bit of vignetting in the lens. Let's see. Yeah, I don't know. It's pretty. Th um, it is thin over there. You'd think it's, that's the sky. So I might, I don't know. I mean, I do know that the, uh, my, my lens even stopped down isn't super sharp up here in the corner. So, um, you know, sometimes, you know, graininess is really pronounced just in unsharp parts. Let's see over here. So I do wish I'd given this photograph a little more exposure, but I sort of like the composition. It, it, it feels like Oakland, California to me. Uh, just, yeah, I might move kind of, I'm not going to spend a lot of time on every one. Oh, I do like this one though. I took this just because of like the patterns through uh, the pavement. I liked all this pattern cracks and whatnot um, but also sort of just kind of saw a little scene developing here um, right again I'm on the BART going 70 miles an hour um, so yeah you know it does feel a little grainy and without a doubt sharp right but, okay we already looked at Bruce Lee Oh, there's a lot of these in Oakland. Um, I don't know. Not the best photo, but, you know, sometimes you just take pictures like this. Or at least I do. And this is the last shot on this roll. Um, and, man, it, it looks good. It just looks good. Right, you start getting, um, you know, whenever you start adding a little texture to things and... You know, the tones aren't all just homogenous, right? It's like the grain starts to just dissolve away, but it sort of brings out this sort of sharpness to things. Um, this is my cousin. He had to go in here for a minute. All right, now let's go to the undiluted. So... Uh, the first shot, you know, he, he was spotting this plant, which actually I was spotting the plant, and he, 
he starts to think, hey, maybe I'll take a picture of this plant too. Um, and so I'm actually focused on the plant, right? And But then he comes in and I decide to include him in the picture. I like how it turned out. He's, you know, look at him eyeing. I love how the uh, flare off of his camera, right, kind of created this, right, this little flare in his face, right? This is like a, a silver, you know, he's got a 50 apo. I don't know if that's, maybe that might be his M, M3. It's hard to tell. It looks like an M3. Um, but yeah, if you come in here, like, this is this is definitely sharp, right? It is it's a it's a sharp developer it's a sharp film but i'm also not seeing any edge effects like you are like you know it's like oh it's like but look lightness but that's just the plant right the plant has that natural um light edge to it so and then yeah the grain is very fine so Now, this is a photo that, like, I find this one pretty interesting because, of, yeah, the grain's very fine, but it is, this is also super sharp, right? This was one where I definitely have the shutter speed I need to freeze things, and, um, right? I, still th I don't think anybody would look at this photo and say, oh, there's, that's not sharp enough, right? And this is undiluted. So you get how, right, Xtol can claim to be, even undiluted, a fine grain and sharp developer. Oh, I wish I had, this one was, was a, I really should have given this an extra stop of exposure. Uh, I feel like I'm saying that too much. I probably need to <laughs> set my camera to like 640 or 800. Um, I definitely like this part, but then I was really wanting the Corvette light, these, you know, the, this like signature tail lights to show up a little more. And I, those ended up totally crushed. Um, sweet potato box looks good though. But again, I mean, this is basically like as crushed, barely exposed as you can get. Um, and push two stops and you can see the grain but again it's not sharp grain <clears throat> again another shot I wish I'd given a little bit more exposure but it still turned out pretty good <clears throat> the reason I say that is too much of his face ended up kind of in the toe um, and just didn't quite get enough and again like I think you know this this type of graininess it doesn't look super great with skin tones so and and I, and I could have got away from that by just a little bit more exposure All right i had the develop undiluted developer but um by the time you deeply underexpose it and push two stops right you get that so okay this one i think i focused here on the sign um, but stop down pretty far, so everything would be pretty much in focus. But it's hard to say, oh, this is, you know, there's a little bit of an unsoftness to this, but I think that's more about, like, I focus on the sign. <clears throat> now, this is a good example of how when your photo has, like, a little bit of texture um, and tonal variance, that grain just disappears, right? This is 100%. And, you know, this might as well be a digital camera. This guy saw what I was doing and got interested. Right? Um, he's like, whoa, what are you taking a picture of? And then he, he popped out. And I, I kept taking a picture of it. Um, it's actually a big mural that's, and so I, I, I like this composition a little better where you kind of see more of the mural coming across this part of the brick. Yeah, I'd like to be better. I, I, um, I don't know. This was, you know, I shot this without looking. This was sort of hit from the hip 
and um, I don't know, I'd like to be better at taking that type of shot. But I wanted to get him taking the picture with me. And then this was another one. I, you know, again, I'm practicing. You can tell I'm like, the, my camera is like six inches off the ground and I'm not looking through it. So this was a, a random, who knows what I'm going to get. But this tree was interesting. And again, you know, I'm, I'm just going to compliment. Like this is sharp, right? Especially just viewed it, zoomed out, right? You have to go into 100% just to even start to imagine that any of this is not sharp. Um, okay, yeah, we already looked at that one. This one was, you know, a deep shadow with blasting sunlight on tin. So I kind of thought that was a challenging scene to shoot. And I like how it looked. You know, you can tell I am sort of kind of pulling up the shadows here and that this is enough on the toe where there's not very much tonal range here it's just sort of flat again you know I mean it's fine but if I'd given it another stop of exposure uh, okay here uh, I found this you know this was a safe on the street which somebody had busted open to get um, wh who knows how incredible the contents were um, what's worth noting again Right, kind of reiterating a lot of the same points, but this is super fine grain, still very sharp. I mean, look at that. Um, so that looks good. Right, and just, I mean, I think I said this, but like my my default approach to, to black and white photography is this like lots of black shadow and, and sort of really inf to kind of emphasize mid-tones um yeah I, I took a i took a several shots of this toilet i'm going to save you from the whole series um but right a, a white porcelain toilet in the sun with this like black asphalt right that's a tricky shot and right it's definitely sharp the there's grain and here I almost want to say the grain I actually find it I don't know I wouldn't say it's sexy grain but it's it it adds something I'm glad this is not a digital photo um all right we're making our way through yeah you know I focus here on the tree and then I stop down to like a 11 Uh, here again, I got caught maybe without enough exposure, right? I'm going to say like double X shooting. Um, if you're, if you're shooting more than two and a half stop under exposed, like you're well on your way of not having any shadows and you're dro starting to drop mid tones, um, which can be cool and what your what somebody wants to do, but, um, it does not have as much latitude as HP five. Um, I mean, look at the, I mean, it's just, it is sharp. It is sharp. Uh, that one's similar enough to the last one. I'll just skip it. Now this is sort of unique to the set, right? I got, I got, uh, the sun isn't kind of in front of me, but above this thing shining through here, uh, this lady making her chicken. Um, right. This is it looks good. It looks good. You know, you can definitely tell it's a, you know, like a black and white, um, you know, relatively fast film, nice green. Now this one was definitely underexposed. Um, and you can tell that like even something that would should be plenty high up into the right like should have gotten you know 
even hitting some of the smaller grains of the film didn't right this is still all laying in the like the the big cubic grains of the film and it really brings out the the grain in it um so this was the grainiest looking photo that i got with undiluted and that's because it was <laughs> right, barely registered in the toe of the film uh, and then yeah bring this here all right so i'm gonna come back here and um just some quick conclusions right so i yes there's more definition and sharpness to the dilution one to three um i'm not seeing super pronounced edge effects so i, I you know, I think if somebody's really looking for what would be classically called high definition developer, like we've got to dilute even more. Um, I'm seeing zero signs of not having enough developer, right? My 125 mLs of, of developer looked like ample. Um, so I w maybe might be interested in trying one to five. Um, Thin negatives didn't seem to be a problem at all. If anything, I mean, if if, if I'm going to keep these development times, I would need to, I think I want to give a little more exposure, maybe um, like a 640 or 800 um, speed on my camera. Um, but then there's always the option of just continuing to shoot at a thousand and then just developing for longer too. Um, but I, I, I'm, I'm sort of feeling like, right. I had, I feel like I said too many times that there were maybe some shadows where I did want a little bit of less tonal flatness. Um, so I don't know. I mean, I'm, I'm right there, right. I'm, I'm like, like one notch away from being sp spot on from a good default. Um, the undiluted, you know, again, it's been a kind of a place of comfort because of, right. I do share a lot of, of photos online and I know most people look at things on phones and I know when I use undiluted x -tall, I get that unsharp grain, that soft, small grain that, um, shows well. Um... But like I don't get uh, as excited about the the grain myself. Um, I think I think I liked the grain better for most images on when it was diluted. Um, and then just kind of like yeah, I get why people like one to one is very popular, um, especially you know for people who use it as like a one shot, right? It's um, it's a very pure, very low risk of X tall death. Uh, it's a great middle ground. And um, so, yeah, you know, a little bit of budget savings. You can still probably put it, you know, fill your tank with as many rolls as it'll fit. So, yeah, I also had this idea of like, what if I just put like 125 mLs per roll? into my tank and then I just added the water to fill up the tank and that would give me a dilution um, and and then I would just use the chart and find the time I sort of like that idea of basically using the least amount of developer that I needed per roll um, but that means my you know I'm, I'm a little bit inconsistent with what dilution I'm using um, you know is it one to two or one to three or one to one but um you know i sort of think that by looking at this that like it's not until you really go into 100 percent zoom that you can maybe start to tell these apart so there's something i like just about you know i often like having two rolls in a tank that seems to be my magic what i like is to shoot two rolls and then develop them together and it's like this the right amount of feel like a good investment of my time but not an overwhelming amount either so i don't know i don't know no you know i'm sort of back to like i'll probably let all this sit for a bit um 
Yeah. I guess if anything, I'm, I'm, I may be impressed how sharp the undiluted is. Um, you know, that's definitely a takeaway. And yeah, it may be a surprising, you know, takeaway that I wouldn't mind maybe shooting double X at like 640 is a good default. I should say that like my most go-to recently has been X tall at 90 degrees undiluted, right? And pushing pushing it as hard as I can. Um and I don't I didn't prepare any of those to show this comparison. Um you know, I've been thinking that like that jacks up the acuteness and um kind of makes a real natural high contrast without having to edit in contrast and for uh it it, it bumps up the grain and right and it also just kind of gives me another little bit of of speed and um but i don't know i think you know i'm i'm i'm, I'm in this to sort of figure it out right so maybe that'll just be a future video you know, and then my, my cousin having this Apple Air Pro thing, like, and wearing that and seeing what it looks like, right, to, it has me thinking a little bit about what does the future of photography look like, given that, right, more and more people are going to be using these headsets to look at images. Um, and I don't know that I want to go there right now, but, right, it's like, there's going to be a demand for more cameras that shoot left eye right eye and can be create three dimensions through a three-dimensional perspective because man is that awesome and puts kind of gives you that i'm there feeling um and then you know it's so pe it's easy for people to enlarge the images to be the size of a movie screen <laughs> you know and you know maybe puts a little more demand on sort of what things look like at you know so-called zoomed in right this sort of you know what does your grain look like might matter more when people start wearing these headsets and looking at images that look you know three stories tall so all right but that's that's uh feels like a tangent all right take care